next guest is an incredible author whose best-selling books have topped the New York bestseller list for years. He's now writing for teens and young adults in a new series. Welcome back, David Baldacci, to River City Live. Hi, how are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. Well, it's great to have you. Now, I understand you are actually in town right now. What brings you here? Um, I'm doing a satellite television tour. I actually have a home in, nearby in Florida for the winter, and then I head out on book tour on Thursday. Oh, very nice. Okay, well, good. Well, um, so you've been writing now some fantasy for teens and adults. How is that different for you? What's that been like? Well, you know, it, it allows me to sort of make up my own world. Um, with my adult thrillers, I'm sort of tethered. Uh, to the real world so I could exercise my imagination with great latitude but still you know with any story you have to have great characters interesting plots twists and turns and I did a lo lot of research for this book even though it was fantasy I based a lot of it on mythology Norse Greek Roman folklore so I tried to put a lot of sort of classical stuff into these books Ah, okay. So, um, is it true though? Is there any truth to this? You actually used a, a pseudonym when you actually found a publisher for this different genre? I wanted the publisher to buy the book for the book, not because my name was on it and they thought they could sell a million copies. So I used the name Janus Pope. And Janus is the Roman two-faced god. You know, I was being deceitful. So when Scholastic bought it, they're a great children's publisher. And they bought it thinking I was a new writer, and they also thought I was a, a Brit because of the way the book is written. Uh, so when I went to New York to meet with them, they were quite stunned that it was actually me. <laughs> Pleasantly surprised, I'm sure. So, um, what what is the uh, what? <laughs> tell us a little bit about Vega Jane and what and what the series is like and what we can be expecting. Yeah, Vega Jane, we meet her for the first time in the finisher. She's 14 years old, living in this very primitive village, a very hard scrabble life. And she comes to find out that her whole life history, the existence of the village is all a fabrication. It's a lie. So she escapes with her friend Delph into this place called the Quag, which encircles Wormwood like a noose. It's full of a lot of danger. They fight their way through it and learn that this whole place was created to keep people inside Wormwood so they couldn't get out, almost like a prison. And that was in The Keeper. That was the second book in the, in the series. Now in The Width of the World, they left the quag, and they're in a world that looks very normal. You know, you have cars and buildings and people and suits and all things like that. But it's a brand new world for them, and it's totally foreign, everything about it. So they have to learn to adapt and fit in. At the same time, they know they have to confront this evil that exists there. And the people in this new world, they look free and happy and open and all that, but they're actually enslaved. Uh, the most insidious element of it is they don't even know that they're enslaved. So Vega Jane has a lot to confront with in this new book. Sounds really exciting, and I'm sure it's the reason why a lot of kids are reading nowadays. And I know literacy is extremely important to you. Can you tell us a little bit about the uh, Wish You Well Foundation? Yeah, it's a family foundation my wife and I uh, established about 17 years ago, and we fund literacy programs and initiatives across the United States. We've done programs and funded them in virtually all 50 states, helped a lot of people learn how to read or how to learn to read better. We also have a, a partnership with Feeding America, which runs all the nation's food banks, and on my book tours, I collect books from my fans, new and gently used books, and those books are then shipped to local area food banks. People seeking food assistance often have low literacy skills, and literacy and poverty are tied together. Um, so putting books in the hands of those people, into the homes, into the hands of their children, are a way for them to break out of that cycle of poverty and pursue a better path in life. Such good work. How can people learn more? They can go to davidbaldacci.com to learn about me. To about the, for the foundation, they can go to wishyouwellfoundation.org, and that'll tell them all about the foundation, the work that we do, and some ways that they can actually help. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. 